Thank you very much for the kind words, uh, Luciano. And it is a pleasure to be presenting to uh, all of you and thank you for attending. Um, so today I am very excited to be sharing with you our work titled A Generalizable Deep Learning Approach to Anatomical Modeling of Brain Vasculature. So in this project, uh, what our goal is, it is to mathematically model the blood vessel network in the mouse brains. Um, and why is this problem interesting and important? It's because if we have a mathematical model of the blood vascular network in the brain, um, then we can perform complex blood flow simulations, which give us insight into the health of the brain and oxygen levels. Uh, such models also help us to study how the brain functions, because as it turns out, that brain function and um, uh, uh, blood flow are very intricately linked through neurovascular coupling, um, which basically means that if one part of the brain is uh, working really hard, then it probably needs more blood flow. Uh, so, uh, so that's why this problem of understanding blood flow and uh, localizing the blood vessels in the brain is very important. Now, a general pipeline of how this works is, first you perform uh, imaging of the brain. And um, uh, we're many times interested in performing in vivo measurements, which means that we want to uh, perform measurements on a live specimen. So for that, two photon microscopy has generally been the medium of uh, measurement. And that basically, uh, basically gives us a raw measurement or a large 3D angiogram, which um, I show on the left. The next step is uh, vascular segmentation, where basically we assign uh, for each voxel uh, that whether or not it is a blood vessel. Uh, the last step is graph extraction, where basically you represent the vascular network in terms of nodes and, uh, and edges, um, and the center lines are plotted as you can see. And now once you have the vascular graph, that is what you can use to simulate blood flows. So in this project, the focus uh, was on the segmentation part, because uh, when we started this project, vascular segmentation was becoming the bottleneck for us. Uh, we had some very large scale 3D data on which uh, we were not able to get very good quality vascular segmentation, which is important for accurate uh, modeling of the blood vessels. Um, so that is what we set out to do in, um, in this project. Now, our work builds on some very exciting uh, research that has been done before us. Uh, traditionally uh, or conventionally, uh, many computer vision methods have been used to do vascular segmentation in two photon microscopy angiograms. And these methods include uh, morphological operations, moment of inertia, Hessian matrix, and many other methods based on 2D or 3D local features. But as it turns out, uh, that most of these methods demonstrated limited accuracy. And the main reason is that vascular segmentation in two photon microscopy is extremely challenging. Here I show you the, uh, the measured angiogram at different depths. As you can see, that as you go deeper into the cortical surface, the noise becomes significantly high due to many reasons like uh, loss of focus, multiple scattering, occlusions. Uh, but the end result is that you have this extremely noisy image where you can barely make out the blood vessels with your eyes. Um, you want to perform accurate vascular segmentation. So as it turns out that uh, these traditional methods only uh, were able to achieve a limited accuracy. This was followed by um, uh, many interesting works based on deep learning to explore this problem. And while deep learning based methods uh, demonstrated significantly better accuracy compared to conventional methods, their main limitation, uh, yeah, their main limitation was that uh, 
the, uh, they demonstrated segmentation only for small scale problems. Whereas you can imagine that if you want to do blood vessel segmentation for the entire brain, you're dealing with very large scale data. Now, let's look at some of the challenges uh, which face these uh, deep learning methods due to which they are restricted to small scale problems. The first one is limited availability of training data. Now, if you think about it, where does the training data come from, right? So once you have this large 3D measurement of the mouse brain, it contains hundreds or thousands of blood vessels. Each of these has to be manually annotated by a person. And especially when you go deep down, it's very difficult to make out the blood vessels even uh, by an annotator. So uh, because of these large amounts of challenges facing uh, generating uh, the training data, there is very little training data available uh, with which you can work. And generally, we know that deep learning requires large amounts of training data. So we are limited by training data. Now, Pablo Blinder's group in Tel Aviv came up with this very uh, nice work where they use unsupervised learning for the blood vessel segmentation task. And of course, the straightaway benefit is that you don't need any training data. So you are not, uh, uh, you are not then uh, held back by the limited availability of training data. However, um, uh, so they use active contours to do the segmentation, but even active contours uh, for them, it's very challenging to perform accurate segmentation for blood vessels which are deep uh, beneath the surface. So uh, their method was uh, uh, limited to uh, 200 micrometers where they demonstrate very good vascular segmentation. So in our work, we overcome this challenge of limited availability of training data by introducing a deep neural network with reduced dependence on the training data, but without completely eliminating the need for human annotated data. And how we do this is by designing our loss function such that it not only relies on supervision from the training data, but it also uh, has an unsupervised term which sort of supplements for the lack of training data. And uh, the details I will be discussing in future slides, but uh, we were able to demonstrate 3.5 times deeper segmentation compared to state-of-the-art methods uh, using this technique. Another well-known challenge um, facing uh, deep learning not only for uh, vascular segmentation in two photon microscopy, but also across various uh, uh, domains is generalizability. And in this context, what I mean by generalizability is that I want to train my deep neural network from microscopy data from one particular imaging setup. Once the network has been trained, I want it to be able to perform segmentation on test data from any to photon microscope. And as it turns out that this is very challenging. And when we started this work, no supervised learning method had been able to demonstrate generalizability. And they performed testing and training only on data from the same microscope. Um, and it is well known that uh, generalizing to various imaging setups is very challenging. Um, the unsupervised work which I talked about, that does demonstrate general, generalizability because it's not tied to a particular uh, imaging setup for training data, but they demonstrate limited uh, imaging depth. So we uh, tackle this problem by introducing a novel pre-processing method where what we basically do is that uh, Imaging data from different microscopes is inherently different. So we propose a method of histogram equalization where we take a data from a different microscope and perform histogram equalization such that the data matches the training data on which the deep neural network was trained. And now when you test on this data, the deep neural network will be looking at something more familiar 
um, if you will. Um, and that we found significantly improves the generalizability of our um, deep neural network. And again, I will be discussing the details. And um, another um, and the final challenge uh, which uh, faces uh, deep neural network for vascular segmentation is excessive computational time. Now, for uh, this particular problem, we are generally dealing with very large scale 3D data. Like if you look over here, 512 by 512 by 350 voxels doesn't seem a lot. But when you are talking about deep neural networks, this data is huge. And given that the GPUs uh, of these days have limited computational resources, it is very computationally intensive and challenging to implement a deep neural network which can um, do processing on large data in a uh, fairly low amount of time. Um, like just to give you an example, one of the deep learning papers that I cited, uh, they, it took them about one month for the complete training um, and uh, fine tuning process. Whereas in our case, we are able to completely train our deep neural network only in four hours on very large scale data. So how we achieve this is that we propose a very lightweight deep neural network. And uh, I use the term lightweight heuristically, um, meaning that it is able to perform inference very fast and it is able to uh, process much larger volumes in a single iteration. Um, and uh, using this, we were able to uh, achieve 10 times faster segmentation compared to the existing techniques. So to summarize our contributions, we uh, present a method for large scale vascular segmentation in two photon microscopy angiograms, um, which is able to accurately segment very large scale 3D data. Now let's jump, uh, let's jump into how we actually do this. So we have our raw data or our measurements uh, from the microscope. We perform training on the deep neural network and how we do that is uh, the deep neural network gives us a prediction of the segmentation. We match that with the ground truth, which is known. And based on the difference, we perform the update of the deep neural network weights. We perform this process until the network is converged. Uh, and now we can use the trained deep neural network to perform segmentation in a feed forward manner. Here is a look into the deep neural network that we use. So our deep neural network is end to end 3D, which means that the input is 3D, the convolutional operations are all 3D and the output is a 3D volume. And this is as opposed to some methods which perform the segmentation slice by slice. And this we found to be very important for high throughput. We have an encoder decoder architecture of the deep neural network, uh, which basically helps to learn vascular features at different size scales. We add skipped connections so that we are able to preserve the high resolution features as the features decrease in size going forward into the deep neural network. Uh, we add batch normalization, which we found to help the generalizability and fast convergence of the deep neural network. And finally, uh, to practically uh, uh, to, practic uh, to practically attend to very large scale angiograms, we propose a patch wise uh, segmentation scheme in which let's say if we have a very large volume, we will take 128 by 128 by 128 cubes to perform a patch wise segmentation for a very large scale volume. Um, um, the training data that we use for our deep neural network is as shown. Um, as discussed before, we are extremely limited by the training data. So we only had five angiograms to work with. And um, uh, even amongst these, the first one was actually used as the test data. So our challenge was to train using this limited amount of data which was acquired on a microscope around like 10 years ago. And can we have that trained deep neural network perform segmentation on data from any two-photon microscope? So um, 
we have the deep neural network. I've shown you the training data. Now the final step is the loss function. Now, um, the loss function for any deep neural network uh, application is generally designed depending on the problem and the training data. And that is exactly what we did. So one of the challenges that we face is class imbalance, which means that if you look percent of the voxels are background and less than 5% of the voxels comprise of the foreground or our vessels. So because of this extreme imbalance, it is uh, uh, what happens is that if you don't account for this class imbalance, the deep neural network will sort of have a bias towards this uh, class, which is more abundant. Um, so uh, that was one of the challenges uh, facing the loss function design. Another challenge which, uh, that we faced is the, uh, that the ground truth labels that we had were extremely noisy. So even if uh, it was a person who actually manually annotated each of these blood vessels, uh, uh, the process is prone to human error. So we have ground truth segmentations which have errors. So they're not exactly 100% accurate. So how do we train uh, or how do we account for uh, the noisy uh, ground truth? So that is something uh, that we did um, in the loss function design. We use a balanced binary cross entropy loss, which intuitively what it does is that it gives a higher weightage to the uh, foreground class, which is less abundant, and weighs down the background class, which is um, more abundant. And that sort of accounts for the class imbalance. Um, for uh, the noisy ground truth, we add total variation regularization. And what this basically does is that um, uh, this term adds a loss on the total variation of the deep neural network prediction. Um, and this not only helps the noisy ground truth, this is the term which also helps the, um, uh, the lack of ground truth data because uh, the first term in the loss is supervised, but the total variation is an unsupervised uh, regularization term. And what total variation does is that it, um, uh, it, it tells your deep neural network that it should basically prefer uh, predictions which are piecewise smooth, such as the one on the right. And it discourages or it has a higher loss value for non-smooth uh, predictions. Um, and um, so we set out to quantitatively test that how much is addition of total variation regularization helping with the label noise. So we designed an experiment where we first dilate the, say, uh, the ground truth a little bit and then drop 75% of the voxels. We just make them equal to zero. So now the ground truth is extremely noisy. And we train our deep neural network with this extremely noisy ground truth. Um, and we found that without TV, we get very severely noisy uh, predictions. Whereas if we have this total variation term in our loss, we get very nice and smooth um, uh, predictions. And quantitatively, when we test with uh, different uh, levels of noise, ranging from 0 to 75%, we consistently get better performance with TV regularization. Um, now, with uh, all the details uh, have been, been presented about the, the deep neural network design, let's look at the results. So here we provide uh, results on a large uh, 3D angiogram, which was used as the test data. On the left, we have the ground truth. We have uh, segmentation from our method. Um, uh, this one is a, um, a state-of-the-art deep neural network. And uh, finally, on the right, we have a conventional method based on the Hessian metrics. And below, you can see uh, 
basically a max projection of um, uh, 40 microns. Um, and it shows that the segmentation from our method significantly outperforms the uh, other methods. And we see that as we go deep into uh, the uh, angiogram, we consistently perform better using our deep neural network, whereas the segmentation from other methods deteriorates significantly. Now, uh, these results look good visually, but uh, how about a quantitative comparison? So before we actually did the comparison, we asked ourselves that um, what, what metrics should we use for comparison? Now, traditionally, the uh, metrics used for a segmentation are sensitivity, specificity, J-card index, dice coefficient, and accuracy. However, as we looked into uh, more details, specifically for vascular segmentation, it turns out that overlap-based metrics, uh, such as the ones that I presented earlier, uh, are actually not very good with complex boundaries. Um, and here I give you an example. Um, a and B. So but in both of these examples, the red outline represents the segmentation of the black ground truth. Now, we can clearly see that B is sort of a better segmentation compared to A, but it's interesting to know that both of them have exactly the same number of false positives and false negatives. So basically, it turns out that these overlap-based metrics are not a uh, very good when we're talking about complex structured objects, such as vascular angiograms. So for that, uh, there's a very interesting discussion uh, present in the paper that I've cited here, which argues that distance-based metrics are much better for general shape similarity, um, which is something that we are looking for over here. So for our project, we uh, actually looked at various metrics. Um, uh, we looked at the Hausdorff distance, modified Hausdorff distance, volumetric similarity, Matthews correlation coefficient, and length coefficient. And um, it turned out that our method perform outperformed uh, the state-of-the-art deep neural network and conventional methods, not only for the overlap-based metrics, but also for uh, some of the other more um, accurate or relevant uh, metrics. Now, here I show the modified Hausdorff uh, distance uh, in a slice-wise manner. So what we basically do is we compute the Hausdorff distance for each 2D slice in the entire 3D volume and present the uh, box whisker plot. And uh, the purpose of uh, this plot is to demonstrate that we consistently perform uh, well throughout the entire 3D volume, as opposed to other methods whose performance actually degrades as we go deeper into the um, uh, 3D stack. Uh, quantitatively, comparing the computation speed, uh, here I am showing the, um, the, uh, the number of voxels segmented per second. And in terms of number of voxels segmented per second, our method uh, performs at least an order of magnitude better compared to the, uh, some of the state-of-the-art techniques. And that is basically what enables us to do lots of experimentation with deep learning and to uh, basically, basically this is what enables us to build a deep neural network for very large scale data. Now, um, once we have our deep neural network trained, um, the previous segmentation results that I showed you, uh, they were for data which was acquired on the same microscope on which the training data was acquired. But what's more interesting is that once we have a trained deep neural network, what happens if we test it on data from a different mouse and a different setup? Um, and this is a problem which uh, has been found to be extremely challenging. So uh, first, I'm going to show you how we actually do. Uh, we, uh, here, I'm comparing the same three methods which um, I've showed you before. And we see that on this uh, new data for which we actually don't have the ground truth, so qualitatively comparing, we perform significantly better compared to these other techniques.
And one interesting thing which I'd like to point out is that if you look beneath this large pile vessel on the top left, uh, we actually have a region where we're not actually performing so well because of uh, because this large pile vessel actually occludes the blood vessels underneath. Um, so even though we're not performing perfectly in this uh, area, we're actually uh, doing better compared to existing state-of-the-art methods. And, and I would like to highlight that this depth is uh, in a regime where uh, other deep learning methods have not demonstrated good segmentation um, um, previously. Now. I mentioned to you earlier that we come up with this pre-processing method, which actually enables us to perform uh, good generalization to data from other imaging setups. Uh, well, here I introduce the actual method. So let's first look at the histogram of the uh, uh, measurement from the new imaging setup or new microscope. And we compare that with a histo with the histogram of one of the training data, and we if you compare their uh, if you compare their linear scales, they are quite different. Um, and this is due to the fact that in the new imaging system we have a ten bit uh, camera, whereas in the old data that we were using we were using a sixteen bit camera. So. What we do is that we perform linear scaling on the histogram of the new imaging data such that its, uh, uh, its scale now better matches that of the training data. And here I'm showing an overlay between uh, the new angiogram histogram, which has been uh, scaled, comparing it with the training data. And you see that now it is a much better match. Now, after scaling, the next step in our pre-processing is denoising. And for denoising, what we do is that you see that uh, we have this sort of hazy background, which is kind of increasing as we go deep into the vessels. Now, the first step that we do is slice by median subtraction, where for each 2D slice, I subtract the median value of the slice itself and anything because, uh, below zero is thresholded at zero and this is followed by 3d median filtering and we see that this cleans up the data quite nicely and to demonstrate the effect of this denoising process um, on the top row i show the result without denoising and you can see that for deep vasculature, you have significant amount of bleeding between the vessels. Um, and this is something that we definitely want to avoid if you want to have a accurate um, a depiction of the vascular network. Um, when we do perform denoising, we actually decrease this bleeding uh, between blood vessels significantly. But as you can observe over here, that with this denoising, we are also paying the price of not being able to detect many of the blood vessels. Um, well, this is one challenge uh, that we acknowledge uh, in, like needs to be solved in the future. Um, but for the uh, current time being, um, uh, we are having this uh, uh, this anomaly where below the large pile vessels, because of low contrast, we are unable to detect these vessels. Um, and possibly an adaptive sort of a pre-processing method might be able to better, better deal with uh, this particular challenge. Now, here is a bird's eye view of comparing our segmentation at different depth levels compared to these other methods. Uh, and on the right here, I basically include uh, a view from uh, the side where basically we're increasing the depth as we go towards the right. Now, after we have seen uh, or after we have uh, achieved a decent segmentation performance for the entire 3D volume, the next step is graph extraction. And for this, we were uh, fortunate enough uh, 
uh, to work with uh, some very capable researchers from uh, the Polytechnic Institute of Montreal. Um, and uh, they basically recently introduced a very um, uh, accurate, a method for very accurate graph extraction given accurate segmentations. And when we use that, uh, we actually see that we are able, able to reconstruct the vascular network or um, the center lines of the blood vessels quite nicely throughout the entire depth um, of, the, um, of the segmentation. And comparing the graph extraction uh, from our method to some of the other state-of-the-art methods, we can see that the vascular network that we uh, uh, that we reconstruct using our segmentation technique significantly outperforms these other methods. Uh, and specifically, I would like to highlight, like be below this large pile vessel, we are able to perform much better compared to these other methods, which find this um, extremely challenging. Walid, just wanted to. Uh, you have your summary slide. Good. Yes. Just wanted yes. to ask you to 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 try and get to the to the summary slide, but it seems like you're there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll take yes. another minute just for you to wrap up. Uh, yeah. It's very interesting, and I know there's a few questions, uh, and there's still a couple of uh, really cool talks coming up next. Yes. So I just want to. I'm uh, looking uh, forward to them. Yes. All right. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, to, so to basically summarize our work, uh, we propose a novel uh, pipeline. Uh, which starts from two photon microscopy acquisition down to the graph extraction and getting an accurate uh, graph uh, of the uh, blood vessels. Uh, and uh, in this particular study, we focused on the segmentation and um, um, and basically present a deep neural network for accurate vascular segmentation in large scale two photon microscopy angiograms. So with that, I would like to uh, acknowledge and thank all of the collaborators uh, who worked uh, with us very hard on this project. Um, and with that, I would like to uh, thank uh, each and every one of you for attending. And I would uh, be happy to have any questions. All right. Well, thank you. That was uh, pretty great, actually. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had uh, access to such a type of technology when I was uh, doing my research work. This looks really, really, really thank uh, you. Uh, impressive. Thank you. Uh, so I, I see there's a couple of questions, so I'll, I will refrain from asking yeah. some myself. There's one from um, Anthony Cook, uh, yes. and his question is, is ground truth weighting based on signal to noise ratio difference between deeper layers and those layers that are provided that provide maximum signal to noise? Uh, yes. So uh, the, uh, let me actually quickly go to that slide. So uh, when we do the weighting in the ground truth, give me just one moment. Uh, yeah. So when we uh, do the weighting. We actually uh, weight depending on the ratio of uh, how many voxels are foreground and how many voxels are background. So generally, if you have only 5% voxels uh, which are foreground, then 0.95 will be the weight of the uh, uh, positive class and 0 0.05 will be the weight of the background class. So it depends on the number of foreground and background voxels in the ground truth in each iteration. Okay, all right. I think that will clarify it for Tony. And there was one other question uh, coming from Uri, uh, Uri Manor. Um, yes. Wouldn't deep learning based denoising be better than median subtraction? Uh, I guess you could reformulate that into have you actually tried any denoising, deep learning denoising approaches? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, that's actually a very interesting question. And um, so what basically happened was that. Uh, Ideally, you would let the deep neural network do the segmentation and the denoising, or train a deep neural network for denoising. Mm -hmm. But what happened was that when we did the training, our training data, which was very old, it wasn't very noisy. So our wow. trained deep neural network has not seen noise. So yeah. now if you want to generalize to new training data, that yeah. was very noisy. So for that, we uh, uh, came up with this denoising method, which just worked really well for us. And I do think that we need some more intelligent uh, pre-processing or denoising because we clearly see that with the current denoising method, we do
have those problems be behind the large pile vessels. So uh, that's actually an interesting uh, suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Well, so I remember from the introduction of your uh, talk, you mentioned that ultimately really you're interested in blood flow in the brain. Yes. So have you actually tried to take the, the, the kind of network that you built using your approach and then yes. try to model blood flow? And does it look realistic? Yeah. So uh, uh, actually, we were working with this on um, uh, like on this problem with David Boas's lab, uh, and David Boas uh, David Boas was the one who actually brought this problem to us. Okay. So this is a challenge that we're facing. So uh, since our particular uh, computational imaging systems lab, we basically only work with computational imaging. So the blood flow computation part that is basically the, basically was the speciality of the Boas lab at Boston mm -hmm. University. So uh, they are doing some very cool stuff with blood flow uh, uh, right now, but um, I'm not familiar with uh, the specific blood flow computations with this particular data that we computed. Okay, understood. Okay, okay. and uh, I see a few other comments here. So excellent indeed. So uh, thank you, Walid. Really appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Your thank you. To, uh, to the AI Microscopy Symposium, the second session.